So basically, privacy, of course, you wouldn't do anything as crazy to put your driving license or your visa card in here. And you know me, but actually we do in the real world trust people we don't know to have that information. So uh, originally, um, I'm from Manchester, the UK. And uh, Manchester has a medieval manor house. It's actually Europe's oldest free public library. And that's inspired me to do a blog. And I use WordPress, and I've been using it for 10 years. Thanks very much, WordPress. It's great. And I blog about uh, medieval history and archaeology. It goes back to when I actually studied archaeology originally. So I've gone from archaeology to engineering, and I've worked in tech R&D since the 80s, aerospace, semiconductors, telco. Now I'm co-founder of Lille Sis Arbe, a Swedish company, and we have a product called Little Sister. It's a secure private social network, peer-to-peer, -peer, strong encryption, IoT gateway, etc. And uh, if you want to know more, just grab me later. You don't even need a beer. Okay. So, WordPress helped me, so I try and help you now with the EU GDPR. But first, some questions for the audience. How many people think that they're okay getting compliant with the GDPR? You want to? It's pretty optimistic, great, yeah, good. Anyone really worried, feel that they need more information to catch up? That's good, good. So I'm gonna try and help you now. So, what is this? The EU GDPR basically changes the way you work. It's a game changer. It's meant to be a game changer for IT in Europe because Europe is saying, one, privacy is a human right, but also, quote, data is the new oil. The biggest companies on the planet are just earning money from data. So the EU wants to grab a slice of that for the European economy. So there are fines that will be levied, and these demonstrate how seriously the EU takes this directive. But there's more than that, because this is about our privacy, your customer's privacy. Now, it's going to be enforced from May the 25th next year. There's no discussion. Everybody knows the law in every EU country, including my own, the UK. It's going to be implemented everywhere, and there's no discussion. So it's just, here's the law. We start enforcing it from May the 25th. This is not fiction or maybe it's going to happen from that time but obviously you've got time and they want to see that you're trying to comply with this law so let's see how you can do that uh, incidentally the only difference between the um, different laws in the country is the age of consent for which varies from 13 to 16 depending on the country in europe so first, what is private data? It's any information related to a natural person or data subject that can be used to directly or indirectly identify the person. It can be anything from a name, a photo, an email address, bank details, posts on a social network, websites, medical information, or a computer IP address. This is a quote from the EU GDPR. Uh, by the way, it also includes paper and hard copies. So what I'm going to do throughout this talk is go to the law. Don't take it third hand. Don't even trust me. I am not the authority. This is the law. And this is where you should start. Not someone uh, talking in a social network or some product. Focus on this. So you have data processors, data controllers. The data controller is the entity that determines the purposes, conditions, and the means of processing of personal data. 
while the processor is an entity which processes personal data on behalf of the controller. So a cloud provider that stores your data. Uh, you've got a website hosting or something like that. Again, this is the EU GDPR. It's quite easy to pull this information. It's understandable. You can get it from the website. So who does it affect? Now, basically, this is the law. It affects anybody, any organization who deals with UK uh, and EU citizens in the whole of the EU data subjects, including the UK. I say that because Brexit will not affect that because we've signed up to this law and we haven't pulled back from it and the likelihood is that we will comply in the UK, just so you know. So it's everybody, there's no exceptions. It applies to all companies processing and holding the personal data of data subjects residing in the European Union, regardless of the company's location. So the EU is putting a fence around EU citizens' data, wherever that data, uh, whoever processes it, it's under the jurisdiction of the EU. So, do you need to appoint what's called a data protection officer? Basically, only if you're a big organization, large scale, etc. So I'm just going to um, show you, again, this is the EU GDPR, this is the authority. And one thing that they say, and this is going to affect the IT business a lot, is privacy by design. And this is one of the elements, important element in the EU GDPR. You have to change your processes for privacy. You have to show that the whole of your business process, your organization, is trying to comply with this. The management, all the different departments, HR, IT, marketing, etc., they all have to work as a team together to meet this goal. And you have to be able to demonstrate that in your organization. The other interesting thing is consent. This is a big issue because you can't just trawl information as you've been doing before and have a general catch-all. No, the law actually says the request for consent must be given in an intelligible and easily accessible form with the purpose for data processing attached to that consent. And that is an interesting big issue, so follow up on that. If you want to know more about consent, go to the website first. And it's got to be clear and distinguishable from other matters. So you can't have like three pages that no one ever reads of legal ease. No, it actually specifically states that it should be intelligible and easily accessible. And this is in the law. And explicit consent is required only for processing sensitive personal data. And in this context, nothing short of opt-in will suffice. However, for non-sensitive data, unambiguous consent will suffice. So again, this is the EU GDPR. Focus on the law. That's the first law in EU GDPR. Focus. Look at the law and the legal experts in your country. For example, Sweden Data Inspection. Data Inspectionen. So... Back to WordPress, what challenges specifically have, have you got? Well, if you have no, uh, if you have no uh, security, you've got no privacy. So you need to check the security. How secure are your plugins? Do you have the latest software patches installed? What about subcontractors? Are they up to date? You need to continually assess and monitor these and other risks. So that's really important that you need to uh, check um, with your subcontractors, the whole, the whole chain, because that could be an issue in a breach. And a breach, as we'll see, could be a big problem. Now, bigger organizations than you have had problems, like Equifax and Accenture had problems, Amazon S3 leaks, crack exploit in Wi-Fi in Sweden. The prime minister said the transport agency data breach was a train wreck. He actually said that. 
So even governments are having problems. It's a challenge. It's not an easy thing to deal with. And are you worried? Is everybody okay with, with this? All right. So how can, we, how can we help? What can we do? You want to know? One possibility is cyber insurance. So if the worst comes to the worst, you've got an insurance policy. Um, and, you know, if you've complied with the law but you have a breach for some reason, there could be very serious financial consequences. And actually, it could be worse than the law. So the data breach damage done to Yahoo's brand was a fall in the value of $350 million because of the data breach. The price went down when they were finally acquired. And that's a lot more than the maximum applicable GDPR fine would have been. And um, some Norwegian guys, thank you guys, told me that they actually have uh, cyber I insurance from IF, I and it's available in Norway and Denmark. I don't think it's in Sweden yet. There are other insurance companies that can possibly help you. It's worth checking on that. If the worst comes to the worst, you've got some insurance because you might have tried to comply and done your best, but these things can happen. Uh, it's also a good way to value how much your security will cost you and also to see if the insurance company thinks that you're worth the risk. If they say, we're not going to touch you, then you know you've got work to do. Just saying. Now, practical tips with inside a, a company. Create a corporate fact frequently asked questions, keep it up to date. You go on holiday, someone can find out what they're supposed to do. Update it, get it reviewed by your legal experts and other ex executives, etc., to make sure it is legally valid. And then everybody in the company speaks from the same song sheet. So, yeah. Right, print out GDPR and other information, names of offices, contacts, and so on. Maybe you have a room especially for this, to, um, and take any official customers here, if people visit you, just show them, yeah, we are actually getting involved in this. So you can physically show people you've got the information there. It's not just, oh, what are you doing here? So this is really important to demonstrate that you take this seriously and that you actually look at the law and have it prepared and the people inside your organization. But the best things in life are free. Um, go to your uh, national authority. So in Sweden, it's Data Inspection. And I'll give you the link in a minute. But also the UK ICO, for example, the Information Commissioner's Office, they have a really great thing if you follow that link, and it will take you straight to a click-through assessment of how you stand for GDPR. So if you actually go to your legal authority, and I believe the data inspection in Sweden too have all these checklists, go through and at least you've done that process. Keep a copy of that, that you've actually done this, and keep in contact with them. If you have a question, ask them, and then you've got an answer. So you're trying to comply with the GDPR. You can show that you're interested. Also, when you do this, you will see how well your status is. And remember to keep going on with this process uh, contact. And they are the experts and the only experts. There's no point going to third parties because if you have a problem, they're not going to guarantee what happened. They're not going to say, well, we'll pay for the damage, sorry. No, you can click through and buy a product. But is it legally binding and are they le your legal counsel? So stick first to your data uh, authorities in whatever country you're in. As I said, Data Inspection in Sweden and um, in uh, your country. So here's the references. And now I think it is going to be time for questions. OK, any questions? Um, the law is saying that 
Uh, have you, you, can we wait for the microphone? Oh, well, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay, so the law is saying that uh, this applies to all companies, regardless of where they're located, if they're dealing with EU, EU people. Yeah. How is it possible for the EU to enforce law in other yeah. countries outside of the EU? Like, if the EU says, hey, guys over there, you're fine this much, what's, what's stopping them from just not paying that and ignoring it? Basically, the European Union, like any union, can have punitive measures against people who don't comply. And if your company, for example, operates somehow in Europe and you're outside, so there can be sanctions like any trade dispute. So, in, in other words, if, if a country or a company does something outside, they have sanctions and, and uh, ways to go, go about that. What, what do you think that, do you have any speculation about that? I'm just giving you a hypothesis. What if Google decided we're not going to comply? What <laughs> would happen? Is the EU going to block Google? Or <laughs> I, I, I think that has to be handled by the authorities, and you have to ask them. I am not the European Union. I am sure, as you know, there, if they believe that the law has been broken, they will follow up on that like any law, it's not just, this is, this is a law, and what happens when other countries break, break laws inside the EU? It's the same thing. So it's those people, and remember, uh, it will depend on, on the courts and raising the, uh, the issue, but once the law goes into force, it's just another law, and if people break it, then someone uh, risks being subject to, to penalties for that law. Simple like any other law. It's no magic, it's, it's a law. It just law. And we have many similar laws uh, where th those issues apply. Do we have any more questions? Okay, I'll ask another one then. <laughs> What's uh, sensitive, the sensitive data that requires uh, explicit consent, what is sensitive? Right, I'll give you an example. I, I gave a talk uh, earlier in the year and there was someone from a research institute and, and he said, um, I was talking about you know, private data, and he said to me, I, I store thousands of fingerprints. <laughs> he said, is that personal data? Yes, that is really sensitive data. But, you know, like biologic, you know, health records, stuff like, you know, very sensitive stuff. So fingerprints, for example, yes. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the sensitive data. So that you have to be really, obviously, that's a top priority to safeguard. Any other questions? All, all clear. Everyone ready? That's we great. Have, I think we have Got one question up there. Yeah, no, no. Can wait for the mic or pass the mic up. So what do you need to know in regards to uh, storing uh, personal data or hosting websites uh, inside of Sweden versus outside of Sweden versus outside of Europe? Are there any particular things that you, know, you should be extra aware about? Right. The EU treats the EU as a whole. So as long as it is in the European Union or a country that complies with the EU GDPR, then it's okay. So they don't specifically do that. In fact, there is a part of the regulation, Article 63, that tries to make a level playing field to enforce the GDPR equally in all countries, just in case there's an issue that one country might not do the other. So it, does, it tries to make one market for the whole of the EU. Now, outside the EU, as we said earlier, the question is, is this meeting the regulations? And unless there's a specific, and it's actually being, the, the agreed list is being reviewed at the moment, but unless that area, that, that country, whatever it is, complies with the EU regulation and it's okay with the GDPR, then that's all right. But if it's not, no. So basically, for safety's sake, what they're saying is store in EU first, Second preference, store in EU. Third preference, okay, if it's outside, as long as that complies. And as we know, that could be an issue. So first case would be recommended inside the EU, unless you can demonstrate and have legally okay that this story, this country, uh, the jurisdiction is okay with the EU GDPR. But for safety's sake, 
inside the EU. Yeah, could you have Mike? Uh, I think he was first. Thanks. Um, you, you mentioned that uh, the consent must be uh, intelligible and yeah. also uh, used as a term accessibility. Uh, do, do these regulations set a bar for a minimum standard of accessibility on web content for this sort of uh, information material? I mean, accessibility in the sense yeah, we're used I, to talking I, I about. I mean, it. basically, this law will, when it's enforced, probably clarify it. But you already have on websites you, uh, from you know, Data Inspection, uh, EU GDPR central site, ICO in, in, in the UK, for example, you actually have examples of good practice. And actually, I, I should have mentioned this, the uh, Information Commissioner's Office, they have a blog. Guess whose software they use? It's a WordPress blog. And do they, how do they do it? So actually look at their website, go to the source. Any questions like this, I could tell you anything, might be right, go to the data commissioners in your country, the you know, EU, GDPR, ICO, they have plenty of information. The good news is you're not the first to ask this question, so they've usually got that. And always contact them, because if it's a new question, okay, we know that, and then they'll cover it, they'll update the blog. So that's the process. But check out that they are the law. And if you've complied with that, and if you've got a copy back from them, oh, this is what we're planning to do, is that okay? And they come back, say, yeah, then you're covered. But if I just say, I think it's fine, you're not covered. So always go back to the law. One final question, mm -hmm. I think. There was one up here. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, right now we have something called tax heavens. So in future, I suppose there will be data heavens. My company is owned by that company. That company is in that country. I was compliant. They were not compliant. So there won't be issues like that. But what, what is done to address that? Uh, it's, it's very simple. You need to know who is processing your data, where are they, and whether you can demonstrate to the legal authorities that this complies with the law. And if you're not sure about this whole chain, get on to your, um, your the, you know, data inspection in Sweden, in, in UK, whatever, or EU GDPR, check it with a lawyer. You know, actually, if you have a legal counsel for this, it's their job to check this, but you can usually find this out, send a question in. That's, they're there to help. It's their job. They, they're trying to do this. So you should learn this process of going to the, um, the equivalent body who handles the EU GDPR in, in your European country or the central authority if you're outside and you want to comply. You must, you must learn and go through this process and keep checking. Okay? Does that answer your question? Is that okay? I think we're running a bit on low on time. So if okay. you feel that your question has been answered, um, I think we should give Stuart a big round of applause for his amazing talk. Thank you. Thank you.